So, so that, that is, that is the question today is, you know, eggnog, is it actually, is it a part of someone's holiday tradition is like, cause I like eggnog. I do. I do. But you know, like what is eggnog other than like a type of chocolate milk? That's, that's vanilla. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think one of the names for eggnogs historically, I'm about to sneeze and I got to raise this thing up. Look, I've raised the camera up with books. This book, wonderful book, it's called The Best Years. It's called The Best Years. And I think it's about the 1980s. I'm kidding. It's not about the 1980s. Anyway, welcome. Welcome. What did I write? Is, is it EST? Yeah. Yeah. It's that's Eastern Standard Time for those of you with a. Uh, uh, a proclivity for details. Proclivity for details, probably not a good way to start. Welcome to Vlogmas 2. No, 3. Excuse me. Vlogmas 3. This is the time of year where on our channels we try to connect with people that occasionally watch a few seconds of our videos. We're glad you're here. And yes, the beard is back along with this little spot right here from my CPAP machine. If you have a CPAP machine... You want to make sure to include that in the comments. It's a growing community of people who like oxygen. Walter Langston says, oh, Walter, because you know, he does his videos uh, in West Virginia there. Along the Appalachian Trail sometimes. DJI, we got to talk earlier today through email. Hello, DJI. Good evening to you as well. And uh, pertaining to what we were talking about, obviously we don't want to go into details here on the channel, but pertaining to what we talked about, I got to turn the thing to, wow, there we go. Because that's the Christmas tree area, and, it, and it's not up. And I'm supposed to show our slow progression on the Christmas tree, which is part of the reason why I've tried to like this the way I have. Anyway, pertaining to our conversation, DJ, I think you're. I think you've got a clear case. I think they've gone out of their way to make it to where what you were saying is probably the right, the right cause. And I think it's. I think it's going to be all right. Again, welcome everybody. Tonight we're talking about eggnog or anything really. Somehow all of our conversations on here every year turn into cooking with a Dutch oven or aliens and Bigfoot. I don't know how that happens, but regardless of how it happens, it does. It just makes that transformation. Gary Millwood says, hello, Bill. Gary, as always, a pleasure to see you. And everyone here on Vlogmas 2022, episode three. I want to apologize. I have to start by apologizing because... Saturday and and Sunday we we were extraordinarily busy, right, Carol? I mean, it was it, there was no time, no time at all, no time at all. I know you can't hear her nodding her head, but she is. She's nodding her head, but no time because we had we were just incredibly busy at the church on Saturday preparing for church on on Sunday. We got home and crashed. We got home and it just didn't happen. And besides, the Michigan Wolverines were also playing Saturday night, and as you probably know or may remember. Uh, I'm a Michigan Wolverines fan, huge fan. And so after spending a long time being miserable as a Wolverines fan, this is the year two of going to the playoffs. And in some ways, a very subjective playoff. It, it, it is. If you're an Alabama fan here, I want to say uh, extend my condolences. Uh, you lobbied well, but at the end of the state or at the end of the at the end of the day, that team from Ohio made it to number four. And just to get beat by Georgia in the playoffs. It's not a football channel, okay? We're not not a football channel. But I have to mention the playoffs. I have to because Michigan's in the playoffs. Michigan won the Big Ten. It's good times if you're a Michigan fan. We're having good times right now. You can talk about your team publicly right now. There were years where we, where we didn't. So, yeah, if you're a football fan, let me know who you follow. Unless you follow that team from Ohio, then I'm not really interested. I'm just a kid, a kid. Hey, go ahead and hit the like button while you're in here. I would really appreciate that. Also, I love it if you share our content, share our chat, share our videos, and let's get started on talking about eggnog. And then what made me think about it, Carolyn, is we were when we were at mom's over the Thanksgiving break, she had a gallon of eggnog, or rather two half gallons, because it's you don't really buy eggnog by the gallon. Maybe you do, but not as much probably in the deep south. I, I think we, we ran into an eggnog deficit it, either in 2020 or 2021, locally here in Harrisonburg, Virginia, we had a, a an eggnog deficit. We just couldn't find it anywhere. Supply chains, I don't know. The I think they make eggnog at the North Pole. It's very difficult to get eggnog from the North Pole here right now because of the supply chain. And from what I hear, Anna's elves, Anna's 
Reindeer are on strike. They have formed a union. I don't know the details, but they had it in Tennessee for, for whatever reason. And so it, I hadn't had eggnog in probably 18 months. And it was so good. And I'm like, this is what eggs were made for. Eggs were made for eggnog. Eggs are okay. Fried, scrambled over easy. I like eggs every now and then. You know, eggs are good. But eggnog, it, it's like this is what you're drinking it and you're like, wow. I need a gingerbread cookie on the side. And we're talking, we're not talking heaven though. You know, heaven's for, you know, down the road. But as close to heaven as possible, eggnog and gingerbread cookies. Anybody? No, but if you've never experienced that, listen, it's not illegal. But it should be maybe because it's it's that good. I would like eggnog all year round. Do you like eggnog? If you're from the Midwest, maybe not quite Midwest, still South, but I... I've experienced this other kind of eggnog drink uh, in the North with my family. Uh, my grandmother used to make it, God rest her soul. Uh, from what I hear, from what I've heard, my uncle still makes it around Christmas time. It's called boiled custard. Anybody ever had boiled custard? It's a little stronger on the egg side than, let's say, eggnog. Eggnog is sweeter. Boiled custard is something else. I don't even know how to describe boiled custard. But I would like to learn how to make it. Mark. Says it, which says, should have called me. My mom makes the best light eggnog ever. And, you know, you have to almost specify light. I don't drink the spiced eggnog. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's got the, in it, you know, a little shazam. <laughs> I don't drink that that kind of eggnog. Obviously, you know, our belief system, we, we, don't, we don't drink. But here's the thing. Just eggnog and a gingerbread cookie. Who need, you don't even need alcohol in it because it, that right there is enough to say Merry Christmas. I'm just saying. Good to see you, Mark, as always. Junior Foreman, has it been a year already? I don't do eggnog. It has been a year. You can tell by the beard. <laughs> Kitty, the beard only took like three weeks for this. But four, I don't know. Carolyn, how long is this? Thanksgiving, the week before Thanksgiving? Yes. This, this, is, this is, you know, that's it. But this is annoying me. This is from the CPAP machine. And I don't know what I'm doing wrong or whatever. I think it's it's probably too small. The nose just keeps getting bigger every year. So maybe it's the nose. I'm not sure. But, you know, your nose never stops growing. Gary Millwood said, I tried almond milk, egg, almond milk eggnog. There's something sinful about that. We need to go to Leviticus. I'm not sure. But there's got to be something wrong with milk eggnog. Oh, how, but I, if it's close. Oh, look. He said, trust me, don't do it. It should be outlawed. David Lowe saying it's in chapter 17. I don't know what's in chapter 17, but, you know, not, not off the top of my head, but I bet eggnog is in there. Not not any egg. Eggnog is great, but this almond milk eggnog. My daughter, Anna, drinks, uh, she feeds the kids almond milk. Right? Is that right? It's the almond milk? And there's something weird about almond milk. Unsweetened. unsweetened almond milk. I don't even like, I, I won't even try it. They keep getting me to try it. And I'm like, no, uh-uh. I can't do it because milk's not supposed to come from almonds. I'm just saying, I don't know where that's at in Leviticus, but it, that's just crazy to me. So milk eggnog or excuse me, almond milk eggnog. No, no. Next thing you're going to tell me the eggs aren't real eggs. It's soy eggs or something like that. <laughs> Can you imagine soy eggs? I will say this. Have you ever noticed like you kick some major acid after, you know, your breath after eating eggs? And I'd say eggnog is the same way. Word up. Billy McDaniel is uh, in the house. Always good to see you, Daniel. Always, or Daniel. Always good to see you, Billy. Uh, we have had a crazy past couple of weeks. We've been working on our fellowship hall in the church, transforming it into an all-purpose area. It's been a lot. Jessica says, hello. Mark says, with almonds have zero nipples. I don't, I don't get I don't, I don't get, oh, well, yeah, because cows aren't involved. I understand. I understand. But they should. See, that's the whole thing. There's something unholy about almonds making milk. There's something weird about that. I just can't do it. I want I want full-blown dairy. Back home, the brand was Mayfield. Best, uh, best milk in the world. I think it's because of all the affection and love that's poured into those cows from the local mountains underneath the, the Unicoi Mountains, Southern Appalachian Mountains. Hot summers, cool winters, and that's what makes the milk good. I don't know. I just know that Mayfield is the, the, the bomb. We call it the golden gallon. It's a yellow gal gallon. And what we were told when I was younger, Carolyn, is that that kept out the sun rays. 
which made the milk better. And most of us believed it, even though that's probably nonsense. David Lowe says, Mayfield makes it better. David would know. Hey, if you just got in here in the chat room, make sure to hit the like button and send me a thousand dollars. Walter Langston says, today I found a dead cow in the woods. You found a dead cow. We found a hip bone of a cow dead. But that's insane. What, what is a cow doing in the woods? You can't get any grass in the woods. So that's kind of that's kind of weird. Billy McDonough says, cows make good milk. They surely do better than almonds. Um, how do you, you know, almonds don't even move, right? So how if, if, if the idea of eggnog being made from almond milk is just something that I don't, I don't want to share. I don't want to know about. David Lowe says, I remember the sun rays commercials. I was telling Elijah about Elijah's his son. And uh, yeah, they, our, our kids wouldn't buy something so silly because you can Google that stuff. Now you can get, you can open up Google. We're going to actually have a video coming out this week. Um, it probably won't be out till Thursday, but just to keep videos going during this time, like I've told you before, Vlogmas, as fun as it is, as much as I love spending time with you guys every single Christmas, Vlogmas isn't necessarily great for the channel, but we do it anyway. Gary Millwood says, rice milk and soy milk, not in my house. Not in my house. Rice milk, soy milk, almond milk. Why do they want to replace milk for? Just regular cow milk. They say that cows are killing the planet, that cows are evil. I mean, we've had cows for a, a long time. I don't, you know, I credit God with inventing cows, but if God delegated inventing cows to someone else, it was tens of thousands of years ago. And we've been just fine. And suddenly cows are the enemy and we're making milk now with rice and soy. Do people not realize that you need fertilizer to make those things too? Anyway. Mark says, what says, Gwen's in the man cave. She's saying hi to you and Karen. As always, Gwen, it is wonderful to see and talk to you. I love you, Mark to death. You guys are great. Juan Thomas is glad to see Juan is in the house. Juan is our secret agent man who lives in Arizona. <laughs> I still know your story, Juan. I know. I know. I looked it up. I think you were in the space race too. Glad to see you as always. And uh, Carolyn says hello. David Lowe says, quit making sense, Bill. I have no idea what that's in reference to. I've been all over the place this evening. But but again, our topic is on eggnog, in case you're wanting to jump in there. Eggnog, is it something that's a part of your holiday experience? And why isn't eggnog available all year round? It's wholesome, sweet, cinnamon goodness. You know, if you're trying to invoke holiday nostalgia, eggnog is the way to go. Again, nothing in it, just egg and nog. What is nog? Carolyn, look up the recipe for eggnog. Jess Garris says, eggnog is not good. Don't talk about eggnog that way in front of me. Juan Thomas says, I love eggnog. Me too. Because it when you when you drink eggnog, it, you okay. are... What's that? Yeah, what is... Eggs, milk, cream, spices That's like nutmeg and vanilla, okay. fortified with... Oh, never mind. That was with um, alcohol. No, we don't want alcohol. But those are your but those are your core ingredients. They kind of skipped over. I've always get a cinnamon in there, and and say, and if not, I've even added cinnamon to my noggish egg. Billy McDaniel says, "Ooh, eggnog not loud in the back cave." Oh, Billy, you're missing out. You're missing out. <laughs> Gary Millwood said, "I love real eggnog." I know you do, as do I. <laughs> Billy McDaniel is like it's swallowing a loogie. Maybe it is a little like swallowing a loogie, but it's swallowing a sugary, cinnamon, cinnamon in meat. You know, it's it's Christmas, Billy. It's Christmas. It's like the cows produce Christmas for you. It's wonderful. Mark says what says absolutely. That's the you know what you're right. Clove stands out. Clove stands out. So Jessica and Billy are on the side of no eggnog. Billy calling it. Billy saying it's like. A loogie snot going down your, your throat, in case you didn't know. Not everyone says noogie. I'm sure there are certain regions that don't know that it's what a loogie is. I mean, it's possible. David Lowe says, I believe there was a law passed in 1922 allowing only cert only a certain number of eggs to be nogged per year. So it's restrained to the Christmas season. Probably, David. I would say that that was something passed. But I, I, I don't agree with your date, 1922. <laughs> I think it was more of the Great Depression era, 1937 on. 
Billy McDaniel says, I'll just take a spoonful of sugar when I have a cold. You know, it makes the medicine go down, Billy. A spoonful of sugar does indeed make the medicine go down or raise your blood sugar, one or the other. Speaking of something to drink here. Eggnog. I was thinking about this earlier because I, I meant to get some eggnog. Well, I had to go out today. I had errands to uh, to run. I don't know if you know Aaron, but he's a subscriber to the channel. He's a great guy. But I had errands to run, and I meant to pick up a half a gallon of eggnog for, for the sole purpose of celebrating the Christmas the Christmas season and j us just coming through. Pretty successful candlelight service. It was nice. It was very nice. Mark says it. says, D-Lo, come on. What will that pass? What will that pass? I, will, that. will that pass? By the way, that reminds me of something. Very soon. Very, very soon. I'm waiting for them. They should be coming in the mail. These are pharmacy-like glasses, you know, the kind you pick up for reading. And I started noticing that these glasses, well, they don't work. Not for me. They did for a while when I was studying and stuff like that. But now these glasses, they're, they're fuzzy. They, they just don't work right. So my son, who works in the in the eye doctor optometrist. optometrist thank you thank you an optometrist i knew it was something optometrist <laughs> the optometrist office and said he made me he's like you gotta you gotta go to come down to the office when you're in chattanooga and i did and basically the doctor said you're blind <laughs> you and he was like you don't i won't tell anybody that you're not supposed to be driving <laughs> he said those words <laughs> he's like so Go go get some glasses. So my son fitted me, and 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 I'm getting the uh, what are they called? Progressive glasses or whatever. Mm -hmm. Billy McDaniel told me to get those. Like if I if I had to, or or he was showing me his glasses or something. I don't remember, and I'm talking too much with my hands. Anyway, so I've been trying to get used to wearing glasses and not like just throwing them somewhere because these might have cost nine dollars or something. Those other glasses cost one of my kidneys, which I'm proud to say. Uh, I've, I've sold. So Billy McDaniel says, my glasses balance out my extremely long head. I'm hoping that my glasses make my head look skinnier. Um, Mark says, so Bill, the best, uh, Woods, the best. <laughs> I just got that for a minute. <laughs> exactly. Juan Thomas says, Bill, in one eye, I can't see out of the other. <laughs> Apparently, I've got a stigma in this eye or something. And he was trying to, my son was trying to explain to me, like, how how it's measured, how large, small the stigma is. And he said something about $1 or something. And I'm like, dollar. Um, and I think that was just like a subliminal message to say, get out your wallet. We're going to spend a lot of money here today, Dad. But no, it's um, it's whatever. I had perfect vision my whole life. My whole life, I was like in the Army. They, you know, you had to read off the thing. And I was like. A, B, C, D, whatever, all the way down to the lowest possible line. I could see great. And it was like that all the time. I've ne I had never been to the optometrist office. Other than like when you go to the doctor, they test your eyes real quick. But I'd never been to the optometrist in my entire life. This was like my first visit. And I had to look into a camera thingy and look into this. And then he put these lights in my eyes. And, you know, he checked the, uh, the eye nerve. What's that called? Optic. The optical nerve. The optic nerve. Yeah. He checked that. that. That one's okay right now. The optic nerve is okay. Believe it or not, with even with being a diabetic and, and having my sugar stay pretty high, no damage there, but just some, you know, stuff. Jessica Harris says, can you believe there's people out there in the world who get to see for free? Yes, my entire life, Jessica, I did not have to pay for vision. I totally understand. Mark says, astigmatism is like... It's like in the eye that butt bulges. Yeah. Yeah. Gary Millwood said, we have a few miles on us, Bill. One or two. One or two. And uh, and the tires I'm putting these miles on, well, they're they're needing to be replaced. I mean, that's for sure. I, I'm missing some tread. I'm definitely missing some tread. And got a little, maybe I'm out of, out of line, got a little wobble going down life's trails or whatever. One of the things I'm subconscious about is this, though. Like, I keep pointing back to it. Because as I'm looking at the camera, you know, you can kind of see your face down here. And I'm like, wow, that nose is bigger. But also, noticing the CPAP thing that keeps you. That's why I needed eggnog tonight. I'm telling you. Eggnog with just a little bit of chocolate, too, is good. Um, it, it, see, here's the thing. Since February, I have reduced my sugar intake. I mean, 
to say that I've cut it in half is an understatement. And believe it or not, I haven't bought any clothes in a while. I, I hate buying clothes. I hate it. And now I'm telling people are telling me it's kind of embarrassing, but you know, but your people are loved, right? People are loving, and they're like, "Dude, you need to like buy some other clothes or get, get your suits refitted or something because you look sloppy." It's because I'm, you know, I've lost a little bit of weight from not just doing less sugar. I think when I when, when Carol and I go to moms, it's like the rules change for us because there are things at Mamaw's house, mom, that you know. Wasn't it? They didn't have that stuff in the house when I was a kid, and, and we didn't have grandkids running around and all that stuff. So she has things like gingerbread cookies and eggnog, and I really enjoy the gingerbread cookies at egg and eggnog. I wish we were there right now, enjoying gingerbread cookies and eggnog. But gingerbread cookies are like spiced, a little bit of warmth there. I think Mark said it was clove. Is that clove? You're thinking clove and cinnamon, Mark? Is that what it is? I'm not sure. Gary Millwood says, our ears never stop growing either. But my ears aren't kicking a shadow, Gary. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I know you're you're absolutely right, but but it's like you look down and you go, wow, that thing, and then the nose. But the ears, they kind of fit. Maybe my nose fits too. I'm not complaining. I'm not sure I should have worn the uh, the, the slusho shirt. I don't know if you guys remember that movie. What was it called? With um, it, had, it was a monster movie. It was incredibly ingenious. It came out in 2008. And I can't remember the name of it right now. It was produced by Cloverfield. Cloverfield. That's right. It was called Cloverfield, produced by Bad Robot. J.J. Abrams Bunch. And it was done with the handheld shaky cam thing, which was at the time ingenious until it was copied 850 times. And it does give you a little bit of headache. But what was ingenious about the movie is this universe it created. There were websites, multiple websites that imitated the corporation that's in the movie. And it was tied to a fake corporation called Slush Show. But here's the funniest part. Now, this is back in 2008, an innocent time compared to now. But this was the way it was is like you had all of these different websites pertaining to the movie, but not really linked to the movie, but they were really linked to the movie. So it added layer upon layer upon layer of reality of this insane monster movie. And one of the products of one of these corporations was called Slush Show. And they actually had shirts and T-shirts that you could purchase. Smart. And I bought one. I bought a Slush Show. Again, 2008. Not because there's no such drink that's called Slush Show. I think that because now there's a they actually have a, a patent on, on something, but or whatever it's called, license. But at the time, it, this wasn't even a real a real product. It was hilarious. Mark says, uh, mostly nutmeg and eggnog, cinnamon, and a touch of clove. When you said clove, though, that made so much sense that because clove is strong. So when you're when you're drinking and has got got the clove in the eggnog, it puts out a pretty good, a pretty good spice. Junior Foreman, as always, Junior, it's good to see you again, man. It's good to talk to you. Speaking of trucks, how's the transmission doing? Wow, 2022 started with uh, not a bang, but a whimper in the fact that my transmission went down. It's like five, was it five or six thousand dollars, and we yeah, five. five thousand, and we did not put a hundred miles on the new transmission until it fell apart and had to go back. We were without a car, if I'm not mistaken, Carolyn, until March almost like it was like yeah. November, December. January, well, February, late, late February. So it was like from now until February, we, we had one of the members of our church, like here, I've got a car, just take this, don't rent one, take this. And, and they were wonderful. We, we think Shelly, we, we love Shelly to death. We're so thankful for her. And she, she had a car she wouldn't use it. She's like here. So we were grateful. That's, that's all we had. It was nuts. I almost went and bought another one. We were close to just, let's just go buy another car, but we, we needed to fix the transmission. And we had, I think we had our car to March. Yeah, we had our car till March. Okay, so man, that's like five months of, yeah, it was just insane. So that's what happened with the transmission. We have a new transmission now. Maybe a little eggnog would make the transmission last longer. I think if you put eggnog, now that I know that it has clove in it probably and, and cinnamon, you could, I don't, I wouldn't recommend trying this, but maybe it would work. It's one of those things. Is eggnog flammable? Really? I'm just saying like maybe if gas is built up, I don't know. Just something to think about. Something to ask your friends about. Something for Bill Nye, the non-science guy. Billy, McDa Billy McDaniel says, I'm suffering from GNS brought on by old age. GNS. I don't... What is GNS? 
Throwing nose syndrome. <laughs> We got GNS bad, man. GNS is a thing. If you drink eggnog, it offsets it a little. That's why I needed to get some eggnog today. I might go get some eggnog after. We should have got some today. I just I didn't. But I am craving it right now as we speak. Just a little, not a whole bunch. That's why it comes in the half gallon. Because you could binge drink. And I'm not talking about any alcohol here. I'm not talking about alcohol. I'm talking about straight up spiced milk with some eggs in it. Eggnog. Just cold, creamy, wonderful. If, if you're watching and you've ever had boiled custard, let me know in the comments. That's worth the conversation. Boiled custard is, is sort of a different region of England. Because from what I understand, eggnog is an English drink. That, that's what I've heard. That's the rumor mill. And so you had one part of, of, the, uh, of the island there that did eggnog and one part boiled custard. I don't know if that's true. I have no idea. Mark says, Bill, did y'all have a gorgeous sunset tonight? I didn't notice. Not tonight. I didn't notice either. And we noticed we face west. No, we face east. We have gorgeous sunrises. I don't know. that Because of where we live, we, we can see across the valley and across the Blue Ridge Mountains. And the sun comes up right in front of us. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Every morning. I think Virginia skies are the prettiest skies uh, east of the Mississippi. And they're in the middle. If you're in the middle of America, better than you too. We have the prettiest skies in the world. Out West is a whole different thing. You shouldn't even count out West. They have their own unique skies. This is just, I don't care where you live. There's something about Virginia skies. They're always, always beautiful. It's kind of a known thing, sunsets. And we've got great sunrises. But no, I did not see the sunset this evening. Billy McDaniel's giant, deep voice, German Shepherd says hello. His name's Chief. We call him Chiefy. It's one of the few German shepherds that it's not that I don't respect him. I do. I think he would chew my intestines because Billy's dog is loyal to Billy and Cindy. But it's the sweetest giant I'm going to kill you dog I think I've ever met. This thing is, and he's huge. He's like, he's literally a giant black German shepherd. And when he barks, the windows of the of my, of my truck will rattle. And, and then once Billy's kind of made peace between us, acted as the mediator every time, then he's cool with me and he'll jump in my lap and, you know, but he's just the sweetest dog in the world. And Jessica Harris says, Chiefy, everybody kind of knows Chiefy. It's kind of a thing. Mark says, I heard nutmeg and cardamom is best for a transmission. <laughs> I believe the nutmeg. Not, it won't nutmeg kind of make you sick if you drink too much of it or something? Unless you want firm hard shifts, then go for crushed red pepper. You know, I could put red pepper in eggnog. That makes sense. Ew. Not just a few flakes, just to get like a, a little bar. You could. You could do that. No. David Lowe says, I think you're right. Juan Thomas says, Mark, the red chilies make it go faster. Hey, I've got to say this, guys. I've got to say this. Don't get mad. Don't sign off. You don't have to agree with everything that I'm saying, okay? But I have something really cool, Carolyn. I have memberships now. Huh? Huh? Now, we've talked about this for four years, so you can't get mad. Some of you have even recommended it. And you know what? In the videos I've made all year, I've, I've only mentioned my, the memberships that we offer twice. But for $5 a month, you can help this channel. You can help us go make videos. You can help offset the rising cost. Do you realize that it has increased for our productions? It, it is a production. It, it, the cost of those have increased about 30%. And so I just want to throw it out there. You don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. Carolyn's going to post a link in a minute and see somebody's already left. They got mad. And they said he's talking about memberships and they've already left. But you know what? I love them anyway. I'm not saying you have to do it. I'm just saying you may end up with transmission problems if you don't. I don't know. It's just the, it's the Christmas season. You never know. So you know what? Carolyn doesn't even know how to do the because I've never I didn't show her how to do that. So later on sometime, check out the channel of video and there'll be like join now. It, it just and just think about it. Just consider it. All right, that's all I'm going to say about it for right now. But it's out there. $5 a month. You can support the channel. And I know we've been talking about it for years and never did it. But in 2022, we did it. And then after we offered it, after we said, hey, we're going to do this thing, I felt guilty. <laughs> I felt so guilty. I was like, no, because uh, I didn't want anybody to feel, you know, like, they, they uh, I don't know. I didn't want anybody to feel bad if they didn't or something. I don't know. But it's out there. So there you go. 
Walter Langton says, don't have much money. But you know what, Walter? I bless you to become partnered with YouTube and have affiliates and have amazing success with YouTube because you've started a channel. And I believe in you. I believe in you because you're working at it. You just got to be consistent with YouTube. You got to be consistent. Uh, Juan Thomas says, heck, I'll send you $100 a year. Get a P.O. Box. <laughs> at P.O. Box, Bill Marion. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, you know what? I've never, I, I've never thought about getting a P.O. Box. Um, Walter Langston says, a Billy Man says, someone needs to help me, help convince Mammy that all the best wives are getting their pappy Silverados for Christmas. You know? I don't know if Cindy can hear me. I happen to know Cindy. She's a, she's a, well, we happen to go to church all of us together. And uh, so I really do think the best wives get their husbands Silverados. But I would specify because you may end up with a Christmas ornament <laughs> of a Silverado this big. So you may want to put the whole thing in there, like what you're wanting in every, in every uh, step of the way. Man, I like, I like my Silverado a whole bunch. That's what we have, right? Silverado? Yes. yes. And it's this, the, it, I love, I love my truck, even though it's had a transmission transplant. It, and you know what? Here's the thing. It's time for us to get a new vehicle. It was time for us about two and a half years ago to get a new vehicle. And I'm still thinking about it. She got me a die cast last year. <laughs> that's, that's what my truck vision is, is, is looking like right now. Like, but at the same time, you know, it's like the vehicles went up 35% in the past five years or something like that. I just made that statistic up, but I feel like it's close to that. It, I don't know. It just seemed like a, a full-size SUV was just yesterday that it was like 50 or $60,000. And now it's like 80 and 90. Am I right about that? It's like something like that. It's just enormous. Like you have to get a used vehicle now if you're in the middle class. And that's just ridiculous to me. A vehicle should not be the same as, you know, same kind of payment as your mortgage. It just doesn't make any sense. Mammy get pappies, what he wishes. He will get you what you want. Juan, I like your vision. That sounds like some type of capitalistic confusion. <laughs> you know? Patricia says, absolutely disgusting. What's she talking about, Patricia? What's that? Oh, are you talking about eggnog? Because no, eggnog, it, it, tell us what you're talking Tell us what, which part is disgusting. It could be that the loogie that, because Billy McDaniel here said just a few minutes ago that eggnog tasted, or it, it tasted like a loogie going down your throat. And I was like, yes, but it's a really good loogie. Like it's, you know, milky and cinnamony and, 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 just all kinds of wholesome Christmas nostalgic goodness about the dog on truck sales and car sales. No way. Oh, what, what about the dog? The dog is wonderful. The dog didn't do anything wrong. It says the dog and truck sales and car sales. No way. Yeah. It's, it, it seems like the prices are pretty high. Gary Millwood says used trucks are not cheap. No, you can't even get into a used truck right now for a reasonable price. You can. And Patricia says, I like eggnog. It's very delicious at this time of year. You know, that's the whole thing. Because we, we were asking, why is eggnog only available during the holiday seasons? Why does it have to be holiday related? You know, so are they scared that people are going to put eggnog with their cereal, like in, in their cereal? I would do that. Things like Cheerios, like bland Cheerios, not modern Cheerios that have like seven cups of sugar per teaspoon or whatever. No, I'm talking about the old fashioned Cheerios that tasted like cardboard. I would put eggnog in that to make the Cheerios. So then at that point, you just have kind of crunchy eggnog. I'd do that. Wonderful. Or eggnog in over ice cream. I know people that do that. Chocolate. With eggnog, not as good as a gingerbread. I think some people don't like eggnog because they've never had it with gingerbread. Because think about it, gingerbread by itself can sometimes be a little, whoa, a little overwhelming. You put it with the eggnog, there's balance to the universe. Mike Golston is in the house, my old friend. What's up? He says, I grabbed the wrong kind of eggnog at the store the other day. It was made from almond milk. We talked about that earlier. That that's That can't be real eggnog. He says, an abomination of humanity. Yes, we talked about how that is wrong, even in Leviticus somewhere. David Lowe thinks it's Leviticus 17. That somewhere there in the, in the law, you're not supposed to ever have an eggnog from anything but eggs and milk and wholesome goodness. 
And the idea of the abomination of making like rice milk eggnog or almond milk eggnog, it just sounds, well, it sounds evil, Mike. Hope you guys are doing well. Word. DJ says, that my car that needed an alterator had to have three installed, but it was under warranty. Now I have two, what is that? 260, thank you. Yes, yes, my eyes are wonderful. My 262,000 miles, Firestone treated me good. Good job, Firestone. Da -da -da. Mark Scissorwitz says, rather spend money on my older Jeep than get a rolling computer with my second mortgage. Boy, that's a hard call, too, because I kind of do this a lot, computer stuff every day, hours a day. This Mac has held up remarkably. He means, I get what he means, rolling computer, because all the cars these days are all computerized. Oh, oh I'm slow. I'm slow. <laughs> They are, it is, he's right. He's right. Have you ever seen these commercials? You know, they're, they're ridiculous about how and they are truly ridiculous. It, the whole thing, you, you walk in and like the new Teslas, um, you, you get in the car and it doesn't even look like a car. It's like a car, the steering wheel is optional and make sure you have your iPhone with you. <laughs> That's how you drive. You just, you just put a thing up to your mind and it, and it drives for you. Carolyn's scared to death of self-driving cars. That's her. She doesn't like the idea. Trust she doesn't trust Plus, them. I like driving and I like being in control of my She vehicle. wants to be in control of her vehicle. On the other hand, myself, I'm all about trusting Google. Nope. Google can't get it right about where you're going in the state of West Virginia, people. I love Google. Google pays me every uh, something a little month. I'm, I'm thankful for Google. But, you know, they don't always get it right, like when it comes to searching and stuff like that. So you'll be in West Virginia, and it'll tell you all about Blackwater Falls. And Blackwater Falls is cool. And it, the, the, you'll be reminded that it's the most photographed venue in the state of West Virginia. But it wouldn't make – we've made 100 videos in West Virginia, and Blackwater Falls would not make our top 20. Am I right, Carol? Is that true? It wouldn't even make our top 20 great attractions in West Virginia. The whole state of West Virginia is amazing. But Blackwater Falls is okay. It's, it's nice. It's a great picnic day, all that kind of stuff. Good, it, Great facilities. Phenomenal facilities, but it's closer to the interstate, so that's what that's what's pushed. Are you following me? So trusting group Google while you're driving, where you just lay back and leave the driving to us, that kind of thing. That's kind of scary, but I'd do it. I totally do. I'd be like, I need a 20 minute nap, baby. I'm gonna I'm gonna rest here, nope. play your phone games, Roger out, you know, and just lose it. Yeah, I would totally do it. Plug my sleep machine that's causing this right here. Plug it into the non-existent cigarette lighter. Do you remember when cigarette lighters actually lit cigarettes? <laughs> Does anybody remember that? Like you push the little thing in and it got red. And I mean, number one, nobody smokes anymore, right? I mean, not really. A few people smoke, but not like when I was a kid. When I was a kid, everybody was smoking. A handful of people had just quit and a handful of people were pretending that they just quit. And they had new recruits. Cigarettes had new recruits every year coming through the door. And it was like that until I was, I don't know, in high school. I mean, every place had smoke and you'd go into a Hardee's and it, you know, you'd have a smoke filled Hardee's McDonald's. It didn't matter. People had a right to their after dinner cigarette, the little metal, they had little metal cigarette trays. It sounds terrifying now. If you think about it, all these people with like a lit cigarette inside of a, a barn or something, but it was normal. Billy McDaniel says, if it were available all year, talking about eggnog, there would certainly be an insurrection overnight. They tried keeping it in stores past January 5th a few years ago. Need I? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's a good point. That's a good point. Oh, man. <laughs> they did. It was bad. It's bad. It almost took the country down. Um, Mike Colston says, Every door had an ashtray in the handle. Indeed, like airplanes, the ash, the, the little thing. Remember, you, you would fly and you'd flip up. Of course, they're still in there now, and they even have an ashtray in the middle section and back of the plane. You say, why? To this day, in case somebody does light up a cigarette, they have a place approved to put it out. But, yeah, every door had an ashtray in the handles, ashtrays in the back of the seats. Yeah. David Lowe says, I was always disappointed. It never showed – Michael Knight not waking up from a nap when he watched Knight Rider. Yeah, why didn't it? Do you remember Knight Rider? Yeah, I'm going to make that noise in a video. You'll want another difference. You'll think it's Knight Rider. But anyway, the little light would go back and forth in the car. And uh, the dude from, what was the dude from? He, he actually was an actor that he was playing. He played, uh, I think his most notable role was in ER, though, wasn't it? 
he would say, Michael, my senses are reading. It's like a little English butler sounding guy. And he, Michael should have been able to have taken a nap right there. Juan Thomas says, when I was a kid, 300 years ago, people, and that's true, 300 years ago, give or take, give or take. You know the voice of the car? Yeah. Uh, William Daniels. What does his face look like? Find his IMBD file. I'm pretty sure he played on ER. Or St. St. Elsewhere? Okay, St. Elsewhere, not ER. It's two hospital shows. Juan Thomas says, when I was a kid 300 years ago, people would and could smoke anywhere. It was a right of man to be able to smoke back in the day. It was. It was like, you're right. And you'd see older men rolling their own cigarettes. Now it's legal to roll your own joint in some states, but not a cigarette. Weird times. Weird times. I'm not, by the way, I am not endorsing smoking cigarettes at all. We're being nostalgic, but I'm not endorsing smoking at all. It kills you. Like it says it on the package. It says it in plain, uh, in, in plain sight. Mark says what says older vehicles are what gives the choice to drive as we see fit at Carolyn, D'Lo, and Juan. Yeah, there's just some truth. There, there's some freedom in gold cars. Strong's, Billy Strong's Adventure, word. Good to see you, man. I was talking about you. I've been, I've been talking about you all holiday because I should have called you again this year about the ham. I totally screwed my ham up. It was awful on January. I, I shouldn't. We. I would. I meant Thanksgiving. I would have spent two hundred dollars for somebody to have cooked the ham for us. It, it was. I've just messed it up in every possible way. So yeah, good to see you. It says Bill, Carolyn, Juan, D'Lo, Mark, and everyone else that I couldn't type. Word, <laughs> word. David Lowe, everything I drive is old. Juan Thomas says welcome. Good to see you guys. Good to see you guys. It's always good to see. You. That's what Vlogmas is all about. It's about holiday cheer. It's about friends getting together that haven't seen each other in a while and having a glass of Yuletide goodness, which is eggnog. Now, I know for those of you who don't like it, you know, you have to have an alternative. I understand. But I don't, I don't think you know what you're missing. I think some type of trauma is affecting your love for eggnog. I think if you reached way down deep, and you embraced your inner Yuletide self, you would find that eggnog is 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 rep it is what we do here on, on this channel, which is get together and talk about aliens and Bigfoot. By the way, Bigfoot made another appearance in one of our one of our episodes that, that's coming out soon. Um Carolyn spotted this one. I'm telling West Virginia is a wonderful state because everybody celebrates. Were we in Virginia? No, we weren't. We were in Virginia. We, You're right. We, we were near uh, Dublin. We were right on the state line, or yeah. the, the line between West Virginia and Virginia. And in that area, I'm not sure there is a line between the two. You, you just don't feel it. That area is just kind of whether whichever side of the road you're on, you know? And we were driving on a two-lane road. And yeah, there was a Bigfoot in a cow pasture where you would get eggnog, right? <laughs> I'm, just say, I'm just saying, like, Bigfoot is wholesome like eggnog if you're a Bigfoot person. It, I'm going to make a bet with you. When we come on here tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, I guarantee you the numbers might even triple because I'm going to load the discussion by calling it something related to Bigfoot. And mark my words, the numbers will jump up. Yeah, what do you think, Carolyn? You agreeing with me on this one? Uh, sure. I'm telling you, it's like solid gold to, to put Bigfoot on it or aliens, but Bigfoot is a little better. But we did see did see a Bigfoot. They all over the state, people of that part of Virginia and West Virginia. Everybody kind of participates in uh Bigfoot. He'll show up somewhere. I thought he was at that little country store outside Waiteville. And whoever named Waiteville the creative te team, they just didn't participate that day. They just they said we're calling in sick. They phoned it in. Is it Waiterville or Waiteville? Wait, wait, Waiteville. Like, come on. Like, I know it's probably an old, like, 19th century name, probably 20th, you know, 17th, whatever. No, like, yeah, 19th century name. But you, you got to dig a little deeper, you know, go deep in the well. D'Lo, I wish I still had my 77 Cougar transplanted Bang 460. They, now they're speaking like other languages to me. Gary Billwood <laughs> says, Strongs, we miss you. Mike Golson said, Facebook just reminded me that 12 years ago, I was headed to 16 hours of Christmas rehearsal. That was as wholesome as eggnog. Mike, that was eggnog. 
It wasn't, it's not a simile. It was 16 hours to Christmas. It's in books now. It's in books. It is official canon Christmas. So you have like the movie Elf, The Grace That Stole Christmas, It's a Wonderful Life, 16 Hours to Christmas. It's there. That's where it's at. It's in that. I mean, I don't know if it's available on Apple TV, but it will. It will. It won't probably make it to Netflix, but it'll make it to Apple TV. <laughs> There's two people in the universe that'll get that joke. Um, oh, it's good to see you, Mike. Mike, we danced, didn't we? Like, not to, not together, not together. It wasn't that progressive of a church, but we, we, like, you and Leah danced, Carolina danced. That was uh, in 16 hours. We had the 19th century get up on, and we were spoofing Charles Dickens before everybody else in Hollywood was. I'm just saying. Strong's Adventure says hello to Gary. Mark says with darn it, Bill. Bigfoot uses deer milk with wild ginger. Not in my house. Only cows. <laughs> Only cows. I always think of uh, Mark because he's from Boston. And I always think of Mark uh, when we get to this one overlook on Skyline Drive. And it's called Boston Overlook. For reasons I, I have no idea why it's called Boston Overlook. But that's his name. And so every time. Because it's a good place to like go to the bathroom. Seriously, I'm just saying it is. There's picnic tables and stuff. And I don't, not on the pygmy tables, okay? Not on the pygmy tables. Anyway, but it says Boston Mark. So we're, we're like stopped by there. And it's like, we'll say, Mark, Mark Sesowitz. We always say that every time. Gary Millwood, good moonshine. I have no idea who you're talking about there. Because because eggnog is eggnog. It's not moonshine. Just kidding, Gary. Um, Bigfoot, d says, I enjoyed the play. You were there. I think you were there both years, uh, 09 and 10. Mike Golson says, oh, yes, I learned to waltz from that play. And I'm still waltzing. I, You know, we don't waltz when people are looking because it would be probably not probably not wholesome. Junior Foreman, as always, good night. Hopefully we'll see you back tomorrow. Mark says, what says, Bill and Carolyn, my first time with you all on YouTube was the lunar eclipse. Oh, my goodness. What's yes. that? Ju- that Hilarious. Was great day. That was hysterical. Of me trying my best to cover this lunar eclipse with a with an iPhone, and not even it was like an iPhone five or six or something six six plus I don't know, but it was old four K. Had my laptop out, and I was trying to switch back and forth between my phone and the computer. The idea was wholesome and good, but I I tried to do it at like at the at the spur of the moment. I forget how many views we were up to, or how many people were watching. Five. It was like 16,000. And for our channel, that's like crazy numbers. And it was like live streaming this event. And it was crashing. And people were laughing hysterically. And I got into it. Like, I started enjoying the comments as much as they probably enjoyed making them. And that it, it was just hilarious. So the next day, I even did a fake press conference. It was fun. Mm-hmm. Billy at Strong's Adventure says, we will be at uh, Pigeon Forge in the spring, and I can bring the Happy Hamill co- happy Hamill costume if you want me to tromp through the woods for a Bigfoot encounter. I am there. If, you, if you're going to be there, and you know when you're going to be there, Carol and I will head down there and say hello. Like, we got to plan this, first of all. And, yes, we want to do Bigfoot while we're there, but that's beside the point. And I want to do Bigfoot downtown Gatlinburg. That'd be awesome. I'm a short guy, so it'd be like miniature Bigfoot or Bigfoot that has, I don't know, insecurity so he walks humped over I'm, I'm not sure how that would work but like at the candy store to have like an awesome bigfoot guy that'd be hilarious no no carol is not digging it but i would still do it but if you're going there we need to, need to do a thing a beat and greet kind of thing uh mock says yes it'd be awesome to have a bigfoot walking downtown gatlinburg the, there is a problem with that there's there's a huge problem though bears I, i'm just there Bears go to downtown Gatlinburg all the time. It's like they go shopping. Like you, at any given time, there's a bear somewhere in Gatlinburg. There's hundreds of videos right here on YouTube. And if you're a bear watching, that is illegal. You're not supposed to be downtown. But downtown, there are hundreds, maybe thousands of videos of bears in the middle of Gatlinburg. You've seen them. You know what I'm talking about. And, and the, my favorite one is this cabin right outside Gatlinburg. Like literally, like here's Gatlinburg. The cabin is right there in Gatlinburg. And this bear, this these guys are grilling steak, and this bear just, you know, basically runs the guy off. And while the grill is still, like, rolling with fire, he's the bear is trying to get this steak off the grill, and he's burning himself to death, so he'll do this. He and he'll lick his paws, and this goes on for, like, 10 minutes, and then finally he gets a steak. It's, it's great. You're rooting for the bear and feeling bad for the guy. 
But yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying, Mark. You, you'd have to be careful wearing a, you know, with all the bears in Gatlinburg and you've got this, you know, I don't think bears are scared of Bigfoot. You know, they probably walk in the woods together, probably hang out, watch the game. So yeah, you'd have to be awful careful. Uh, but talking about this has dropped me for some, four people watching right now. I'm trying to figure that one out. It's like, was it that offensive? Uh, Billy McDaniel says, breeding season, and they can't wait, and they can't see well, so you guys wear that suit all you want. Yeah, that, that might present a problem. Trunks Adventure says, it's a dog costume, but he does have feet, and it smells like everyone that has worn it since 1976. <laughs> That's great. Go dogs. Nasty. Nasty. I've only won. They, they're trying to get me to wear a Santa Claus suit at Ray of Hope. And, um, you know, it's like, ah, Santa wasn't bald, man. You know, I don't guess. I don't guess. I think Santa had a nice hairstyle. I just, you know, I'm too short to be. Santa is supposed to be a tall, jolly fellow. I'm sort of like short and temperamental. <laughs> short and temperamental. Is that that's right? You agree? Are you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm not the Santa type. I'm more of like the disgruntled elf. You're the Grinch. I'm, no, I'm not quite the Grinch. Yeah. No, because not, he's redeemed at the end. Yeah, I'm. A, I am more like the the union officer for the elves. I, I really am. <laughs> I, you know, it, uh, <laughs> it's it's more of my type. You know, Bobby Elf, get in here. What's wrong, boss? You know, one of those things. Boy, that would be a great thing to 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 stage. Me and the elves. <laughs> Have you ever watched Rudolph and really picked up on the subtle hints the writers were putting in that thing? Rudolph, again, one of my favorite Christmas stories, I'm sure, everybody. But, but here's the thing. It's messed up. Watch it sober. Watch it sober. And just as, a, as adults, pay attention to what not necessarily a good a good thing. Strong's Adventure says, how do you know that Santa wasn't bald? I know. Trust me, I know. I know I, I could write books on the matter. I, I am an expert. I have a library of books that tell me about Santa Claus and I have met him. Out, there's photos of him. All of yeah. them where he's not wearing his hat. They show hair. All those photos. And those are valid. The, the Coke commercials, those are valid Santas. <laughs> they, 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 they had to get a license for that look, man. It's tall. It's got gla I got glasses, but look at what kind of glasses these are. These are these are the ones I were wearing that I've been wearing for a couple, I don't know, two, three years. And like to read, and I didn't realize that I was blind. Uh, my optometrist had to tell me, you know, technically you're not supposed to be behind the wheel. And uh, so, yeah. Mark says, Tim Allen begs to differ, Strongs. Gary Millwood said, grumpy old man, not you. Yeah, well, it's not grumpy. It's just more like, um, I don't, you know, but. I guess it wouldn't. I guess it wouldn't be because you 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 do get into the whole Christmas idea and the theme. Yeah, so. I, the theme is the birth of Christ, the light of the world. That that is that is what Christmas is about. Is the light of the light of the world coming into the world for our salvation, and that's what I believe. All of the whatever that has come around it is it's it's worthy of poking at. It's worthy of fun to make kind of make fun of. Uh, I mean, that's just my, that's my opinion. I mean, Rudolph, come on. A reindeer with a red nose. We know reindeer don't have shiny noses, but elk do. And that's where, that's where the problems begin. Strong's Adventure says it's probably why he wore a stocking cap. Like I wear a ball cap everywhere. Do you wear a ball cap? I guess you do. I've seen a video with you. I think I've seen a video with you in a ball cap, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, yeah, yeah. Man, we wore, speaking of Dutch ovens, we wore our Dutch oven out this year for about six months. We, we I, I was cooking everything in it, and it was a lot of fun. We're gonna get it back out. It's a winter thing for uh, for me. Now, I don't know why it invokes some kind of nostalgia that way, but it does. It's like a winter theme, and I'm gonna try to do something else this year. You guys were making all those cool desserts. That's what I want to go with. I want to try to make a dessert with the with the Dutch oven. We were saying because Billy McDaniel, we were going, we were doing something, and we were talking about putting something in I cannot remember what it was, but it was like, uh, not, it was not pancakes, biscuits or something about cooking biscuits, like over a fire in a Dutch oven. And because of your channel, which you guys really need to check out, it's really cool. He puts the coals on top of the lid. And I had never seen that before. I was like, Oh my gosh, you could do that. Wow. 
so that's something cool that I, I just want to try it once. And I think this winter we're going to try it if everything works out right. It, it just sounds like a lot of fun to do. Then the apple turnovers uh, that your wife made on the channel, that was really cool. I was like, that's not even fair to be able to make apple turnovers. You know, Carolyn's walking around behind me so, or in front of me here. So it's like watching, talking to her, but you at the same time. It says, make bread pudding, Bill. Bill, bread pudding. What is bread pudding? Carolyn, can you find out what bread pudding is for me? Show me a picture of bread pudding. We were supposed to be in front of the television tonight with, you know, having some background other than the lighting with where the Christmas tree is supposed to be today that, and we're late on it. That's what was supposed to happen. But we got caught. Up. Oh, bread pudding looks good. I have had bread pudding. But we, we, we didn't get to it today. Jessica Harris says, bread pudding is like French toast in a casserole form. That's pretty good description, Jessica. That's exactly what it looked like. I told Carolyn right before we signed on, I said, I would do anything for a brownie right now. Just a regular old brownie. Mark says, oh, dear Lord, Bill. Juan Thomas, make some apple cobbler in my Dutch oven. It will come out good. Apple in my Dutch oven. I love <laughs> Knucklehead. I love it. I went to look to buy Dutch, seriously, to buy Dutch ovens for the channel. That was like my thing. And like, seriously, give out Dutch ovens, like five of them. They're expensive. And the Dutch oven that I had at mom's, which I think you said that was your Dutch oven. <laughs> you were like, that's my Dutch oven. It was hilarious last year. And, but it was in the, in, in the attic or something. I can't remember. And it, it cleaned it out and all that stuff. But it, to buy one, especially the new ones, they're like ceramic or something. They're made from some type of plutonium. And I, I don't know, but they're, they're not, they, they're not cast iron. I don't guess, but they're extremely expensive. Dump cake is good. It's kind of like cake, but it's still not a cobbler. <laughs> all of this is sounding good to me right now. Cause I, I'm, I've got a sweet tooth right now, big time, like wanting something sweet. We ordered pizza tonight. Uh, we again, busy day and had to talk to the landlord, which is complicated. The landlord, I got to tell y'all a story. I know Carolyn's giving me a look like, don't do it. Don't do it. Less. Or excuse me. Uh, what was it? Six months ago? Um, not even. Well, yeah. Six months ago. Yeah. Yeah, because it was July. It was July. It was in July. Two months prior to what I'm about to tell you, and for the past year, our awesome landlord would say to us, you are the best renters. Am, am I lying? Am I? What are you even? Call me. Don't call the renters. If you need anything, call me. You're the best renters I've ever had. And you never got the feeling that that this was a con. You never got that. Did you ever get that feeling? It, and he's about 70-something years old, so there was a warm kind of I'm a grandpa kind of thing going on. I liked him. Matter of fact, I was very respectful, as I am to uh, to to everybody, really. I mean, but especially older people, people a little older, you know, you show them some respect. We didn't call much for anything. I mean, things break. It was It's new. It's new. So, you know, it's in pretty good condition. However... I mean, again, this went on the whole time we've been here, but mainly that last year because we we were with him through COVID and we didn't ask for extensions or anything, and uh, we we paid earlier on time. That I mean, every time, never have missed rent. Never, have we ever missed rent? Not a single time have we ever have we ever missed rent anything at all. Never missed the deadline. Never missed a late no, nothing. Oh, nothing. He said, "You're the best renters I ever had. I'm so thankful for you." All during COVID, we paid the bills, right? And then the air conditioner went out. Carolyn called. Middle of July. In the middle of July, and, and it was a hot summer. I mean, July. Virginia is not as hot. This part of Virginia is definitely not as warm as where I'm from in Chattanooga. It's not, not as warm as really DC and other places. But because of the altitude here, I think the altitude we're at is something like eighteen hundred to two thousand feet. So that makes a difference. But he was furious that we called him and we said, "Hey, we, we you got to get to this," because it was a Friday, which means he had to pay somebody overtime. But it wasn't even after five o'clock yet. It wasn't even after five o'clock. And but he was furious, and he's not. Well, he's, I have to wait till Monday, and Monday yeah, was a holiday. And Monday was a holiday. So, long story short, he doesn't like us anymore. Our dryer went out because the dry it's a fur it's not furnished, but it came with the washer dryer. And because Dad lives downstairs, and it's an exact copy of upstairs, we have our washer and dryer down there. And so when the washer and dryer went out, instead of responding, he texted me, which hurt my feelings. It did because like I called him. The, the dryer is the belt's out. And I, I can fix actually I can fix that. Of course, Billy McDaniel and David Lowe both are going, don't do it, Bill. Don't do it. Because you guys, 
have worked with me before and know that I really can't use a drill efficiently, but still I know how to, I have fixed the heating units many times in those in, 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 in dryers. So I know kind of what's going on down there. It's probably the belt, maybe the bearings and so forth. So I go to work or, or, or you know, make the call and I, I leave a message and I wait, no return hours, hours and hours go by and I get a text. And the text is, the guy will be there Wednesday. Let me know immediately if that's okay. Yeah, something like that, I suppose. And I'm like, okay, I'm not the one complaining about not getting a response here. And I never understood. I, I just, I don't, it hurt my feelings and my pride. I wanted to say, buddy, I love you, man. I was your favorite winner, winner back in, in June and in May. In April, what happened between us? You're a great guy. And and when we were in that little exchange, it wasn't even a mean exchange on our end, but he was like, maybe you guys shouldn't live here. And I'm like, what did I do? It, it, it was all because we said that, you know, hey, the air conditioner is out. Just kind of weird. Matt Smith is on us. Just signing in right now is crazy because the chat and the content aren't lining up. Yeah, it's, it's hilarious, they Matt. Never they never do. I think you can get it. There's a thing you can put on to scroll down, but yeah, it's more fun the way it is. It's a lot more fun putting together Bigfoot with uh, or whatever we're talking about. Always good to see you though, Matt. Love you to pieces, man. I don't even where did we go here? Let's see. Juan Thomas Bark, John Strong says Mark said I was uh, wondering that too. But I asked him when was the tree going up? The tree was the ceiling, and I said the next day or two because we've been so it's, busy. We have been busy. We've not been able to put the tree up yet. It's coming. That's what the shadow in the boxes represent. That's why I've got it lighted the way I do or lit, depending on which grammar book you had as a kid. And yeah, so that's what that's supposed to represent: the light and the boxes. I got what six, seven more boxes to bring up from downstairs. So yeah. Gary Millwood says you started coasting, costing him money there. Yeah. I mean, honestly, he, he's a, he was a great guy. He's an old Mennonite guy. We used to be, I think, you know, not so much now, but I don't know. It hurt my feelings. It, it did. It wounded, it wounded me for a minute, 30 seconds to think, but I've done everything I'm supposed to do here. I almost went to his house, knocked on the door. I almost did. Cause he lives behind us. I did. I know. I thought about it. I thought about it. to go knock on his door and just say, and call his name. We'll call him Bobby for the purpose of the video. I said, Bobby, I love you, man. What, what happened between us? And you're right, Gary. It's just cause uh, I started costing him money. Yeah. Mark says a uh, question. I love your dad. <laughs> How is he doing? Dad's great. Dad's hilarious. Uh, I'm guessing right now, cause he's downstairs. I'm guessing he's laying on the couch with his eyes closed, watching SpongeBob. I'm guessing, and there, that's with about 87% accuracy, I'm pretty sure. He's been okay. He's been okay. Uh, Gary Millwood says, you started costing him. Strong's Adventure says, oh, Lord, Bill, the bad tenant. That's what it made me feel like. I, you know, I, I haven't missed a house payment. I don't, I don't know when we've ever, like, it's been a long time since I've been worried about the, uh, you know, the bill man, so to speak. It's been a long I mean, it's been, Carol, I've been married a long time. and it, You have to go way back. And now... I felt like that guy. I'm not that guy, but that was the kind of exchange. And, and here's the thing. Here's what I did. You know, I just humbled, I did what the Bible tells us to. I, I humbled myself. I didn't deviate from the truth at all in the sense of uh, I didn't make it sound like I had done something wrong. I don't want you to misunderstand that. But I humbled myself so that he didn't think I was going to be ugly to him at all, even though he was, I, I, I wasn't going to be that way. I was going to, you know, maintain my, my character, maintain my witness for Christ. But at the same time, I wanted to say, hey, man, the air conditioner is important, buddy. The air conditioner is important, just like the dryer is important. We do have another set of washer and dryer here. That's what makes it kind of weird because, again, like I said earlier, we have a washer and dryer downstairs, and we don't want to use that one, though, because Dad dad smokes now. He goes outside to smoke, but his clothes smell like smoke. So the dryer, so dry, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's one of those. So, yeah. So we're not exactly without a way to wash clothes, but we want our washer and dryer. But he's like, they'll be there Wednesday. And that's fine. That is, that's adequate. I hope it, did he mean this Wednesday? I have to, re, I have to look at the text again, because he might mean Wednesday of next month for all I know, and maybe down the road. He's actually, he's been a good landlord. You know, snow removal comes with our deal here. It's great. Snow removal. 
And that's because that means I don't have to do it. We live on the side of this uh, miniature mountain here and pretty good elevation. So when, when we get snow, we get snow and they, they take care of it. He does a great job. So everybody's trying. They said they're trying to get me back onto uh, eggnog. Well, that's the whole point. Eggnog. <laughs> How that relates to this, I have no idea. Should offer Bob the good eggnog, says Gwent. You should offer Bob the good eggnog. The eggnog, the non-alcoholic eggnog. I think all you need, though, and again, I'm probably going to get eggnog right after this. There is a, there's, yeah, it's going to happen. I'm going to go. What is Food Line five minutes down the road? Yep. Five minutes down the road. I, I've been pretty decent on my diet. You know, we served refreshments before the candlelight. You know, it, it, they did a great job too. Even though ha most of our fellowship hall is under construction, and I put up the caution tape. And so they had all these beautiful desserts before the candlelight service. It was really kind of awesome. And I looked back there and I kept going back there to shake hands with people and stuff. And every time I'd go back there, I would say, shun the very appearance of evil. And I would turn around and walk the other way. And then I would come back. It'd be like two minutes later because I'd hear different voices. So I would come back and go, shun the very appearance of evil. And because they'd have chocolates and this and sweet southern iced tea. They make, our people make some good iced tea. I've never and I would, re, I would resist that every time. And I'm feeling empowered because of that. So now I'm just going to go get some eggnog at Food Lion or Food Brand. What is it? Food Land? Okay, food. I don't know. I don't go to the grocery store. Carolyn does. She has forbidden me from going to the grocery store now. How much Coke do, are you drinking these days, Bill? You, sir, will be so proud of me. Matter of fact, Carolyn, if you would, because I don't want to stand up with the camera and that'll be awkward. If you could, I want to show you what I'm drinking these days, Matt. They got me, and Billy McDaniel, I don't know if he's still on here or not, but Billy McDaniel tricked me with a different brand than this, and it's actually better. But this is Coke Zero, Cherry Coke Zero to be exact, and I am a reformed man. I occasionally will have a Coke. Like every now and then, I'll have a Coke. And what I mean every now and then, I can't even do it that much anymore because what I noticed, if I have an every now and then moment, and I'm like, we're in the mountains, I'm either hiking or Carol and I are doing our thing. I'll say, okay, I want to have a Coke and just one. I will crave that Coke. I'm serious because there is a difference. But as far as taste is concerned, I, I'm, I'm settled in. I'm settled in to, to what we have. It's pretty good. It's, it's Pepsi. The Pepsi one is better because it actually tastes like, uh, like actual Coke. So, yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing a lot better. This year has been a productive year on the Diabetes March. My congratulations to you. My condolences to your taste, but bro, you have no idea, especially being a Southern boy. It is hard because Coca-Cola is like eggnog. Let's get, oh the, do, you, do you understand here? <laughs> Coca-Cola and eggnog, they're friends. They're friends in this American kind of thing, U.S. nostalgia stuff. And so eggnog is like a once a year thing. And it's kind of like what Coca-Cola has to be, has to be it for me. And then uh, Walter Langston says, been drinking Dr. Pepper since Zayo. Zay, Z zero. Since, oh, yeah, Dr. Like Pepper Zero. zero. Yeah. I haven't tried that yet. Matt Smith said it's like water. It is like water. Eggnog, Coke. There's just, there's just the, it's just the best. It's, it's wonderful stuff. All right, guys. I've been on here an hour and eight minutes. It is time for me to go get eggnog. I've enjoyed Vlogmas 3. It has been amazing. Make sure you click the like button and blah and stuff and, do the hokey pokey, turn around on a backflip. Make sure you do that. And uh, we're going to be back tomorrow. And I promise you we're going to have more people on here at, at a steadier pace because I'm going to put Bigfoot. I'm going to put Bigfoot in the title, okay? Because <laughs> when you put aliens and Bigfoot in it, oh, views, and likes, and subscribes. It's hilarious. People are – it's like a constant con is what it's like. People are, like, addicted to furry things in the, in the woods. It's that scary. I love everybody. Good to see everybody again. I'll see you tomorrow night for Vlogmas 4. Word.